great band that was Bad Dream by Frankenstein Boats, who are on a set of nationwide tour at the moment. Cool. Tonight in our Spotlight feature, we focus on the year 1999. The year Gay Byrne hosts his last Late Late Show after 37 years, and the entire island of Ireland vote in favor of the Good Friday Agreement. It was the year the Murphy's Irish Open was won by Sergio Garcia, a Spaniard. In 1999, Dorothy McCann, the actor, Joseph Locke, the tenor, Jack Lynch on Tisha all passed away. In the same year, Cork beat Kilkenny 13 points to 12 to win the All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. And Ireland changed its currency from pound to euro. Finally, 1999 was the year that saw the last sunset of the millennium at 4.41 p.m. on Dursey Head in West Cork. Cool. You're listening to Johnny Rocco on The Midnight Show on WSLR. Well, Johnny Rocco, 1999 may have been a year full of major historic and interesting events, but tonight we're focusing on 1960 fucking seven. A year that was much more unusual and life changing. It was full of unexpected surprises. first human heart transplant was performed by Dr. Christian N. Bernard. Kurt Cobain was born. And Patrick Kavanagh, the poet, died. It was the year the Beatles released the Sgt. Pepper's album. And it was also the year that I met Tommy. Isn't that right, Tommy? Tommy's a man of very few words lately. Things were a lot different back in 1967. Take, for instance, the Catholic Church. Priests could do no wrong. What they said was gospel. And if you challenged their word, you got a slap in the head. Yeah. And that's from your fucking parents. The problem is, when they show their true colors, and 
do something totally perverse that goes against everything you've been led to believe is right. That's when you go into shock. Not just because of what the fucking perverts do, but because of what your family and friends don't do. <sighs> fucking human nature. A lot of young lads, my age, wouldn't have a clue about shock. You know, real shock. I'm 12 years old. I'm still in fucking short pants. 12 years old. Father Cornelius, the bastard. Corners me in a locker room. I'm late for class. So there's nobody else around. The dirty scumbag. I'd like to think I was ahead of me time when it came to having a brain. Even after all the slaps in the head. I couldn't tell anybody. Not even me parents. They wouldn't fucking believe me. So I panicked, ran away. I'll never forget it. I was away for two days, cold, hungry, in pain. My parents had the guards out looking for me, as well as half the fucking town. The man walking his dog eventually found me down by the river that runs at the back of the houses on Buffer Street. He was unaware there was anybody looking for me, and he couldn't get a word out of me. So he brought me to the guard station. I remember thinking, you'll be all right now. The guards will arrest this dirty bastard and lock him away. Fucking hell. I got that one completely wrong. It seems I wasn't that far ahead of me time after all. I'll never forget it. I stood in front of what seemed to be a very high counter. I couldn't see anyone. The man with the dog called out and this voice with a funny accent says, can I help you? <laughs> Your man explained how he found me and... and he left. The voice told me to come around to the back of the counter, which I did do. He was a short, plump guard with what I now know was a thick, curry accent. He asked me, was my name Jimmy Costello? The boy who ran away? I said, yes. He told me to tell him why I ran away. I told him, dirty priest had bent me over the bench in the locker room. And had stuck his willy up me bum. Even after two days, the pain was horrendous. The 
the blood had soaked through my short pants and some had gone hard but it had trickled down my leg Now he could see this Do you know what he said? Do you know what that fat fucking curry bastard said to me? Calm down! Calm down! You're out of control! You need to settle down! Come with me. He leads me to a cell. He says, you spent some time in here on your own and think about what you said. You won't get to heaven telling lies. He then left, leaving me alone. I'm shitting myself. I'm in this damp, smelly hellhole for what seems to be forever. The good sergeant came back a while later and asked me had I reconsidered my story. I say no. What they told you is the truth. Do you know what the fucker did then? I couldn't believe it. He takes out two pins. You know the kind you get in the packaging of a new shirt? He then proceeds to stick them into me hands, me legs, me neck. He asked me again had I reconsidered my story. I said no! The next thing I knew, my glasses are flying through the air after the box in the head he just given me. He was interrupted at this point by a detective. He wanted to know my name and why I was there. The sergeant told him. Said I was just another runaway. No mention of Father Cornelius. It's funny that human nature thing. You know that old saying, what goes around comes around. You know, Father Cornelius, the pervert priest, whose past came back to haunt him. He took the easy way out. Pills and whiskey. The rotten bastard! I hope he's burning in hell! And then, today, by pure coincidence, I met an old acquaintance of mine. He didn't remember me.
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's funny.